for the real person, woman, natural person of Tracy Moore. Where is she? Meaning it comes from it. Do you realize you got 50 sovereign states here that can do their own thing, separate and aside from what the federal government does? And they do it all the time. All the time. For the record, I'm here on special visitation. Okay. For that name, I'm not here as myself. I'm kind of doing different things. Well, you've been known as Tracy Moore. Yeah, but I. I don't know what that means. Yeah, Judge, if we're going to play these games, I'm going to ask for a default enter now. I, I can't. I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> well, oh, wait. So, so, ma'am, um, he was saying that if you're not Tracy Moore occupant, and there's no other occupants here. Well, I'm, I'm not an occupant. I'm real, I'm here because this is my home, you know, and it's a consumer good, and it's... Yeah, it's a consumer good. Yeah, it's, it's my home. This is where I live. Well, I, it's not, I have more than well, so What are you getting consumer good from there? You know, you, well, UCC? No, no. What's in that? Because the home is not a consumer good. It, it is. It's it's where I live. It's an essential consumer good. Yeah. Because it's where I live. It, okay. Yeah. It's so in my head. So it's, what does you mean? Just say I'm I'm here on behalf of. You can't be here on behalf of anybody unless you're a lawyer. Well, the lawyers are the only people that can come on behalf of someone. Why though? What? Yeah, I mean, why? How, how That's the rules. Okay. You know, and occasionally, if you might have some kind of court order for guardianship or something, you know, you might be able to appear that way, but otherwise, no. <laughs> well, again, I'm here on special visitation. Now, what's a special visitation? I'm Where not, who are you visiting? Well, I'm visiting here, but okay. I'm not, I don't know about the, like, not okay, well, we need to occupants. have some occupants or Tracy Moore. We don't have occupants or Tracy Moore. He's right. There's nobody here because you you can't you cannot appear on behalf of somebody. Well, I'm here. I'm, I'm not appearing. I can't appear. I'm not a ghost. I'm a real woman. I'm a natural person. Well, ma'am, I don't know what you mean. Uh, we're looking for the real person, woman, natural person of Tracy Moore. Where is she? But she can be her. She what? <laughs> she can be here. But where is she? Because if she's not here, and we don't have anybody else that occupied the premises that are at issue, then he's entitled to a default judgment. Because yeah, nobody's here. No, I'm here. And well, I'm so who are you? You keep saying you're on behalf of somebody. I don't even know who you are. The case just says occupants. We had somebody named Tracy Can came you put before. Beneficiary? But what? Can you put beneficiary? Can you be a beneficiary? Yeah. No, you have to be the person for the, that's occupying the premises. There's got to be somebody that's inside living in the premises here. And nobody's here. Well, I am except the lawyer. Living. Yeah, but, but who are you? I'll, I'll tell you that I can be Tracy. You tell me you can't. Yeah, be. I can. I mean, I'll be Tracy. For this. Are you Tracy for this purpose? It's Tracy yeah. Moore. Sure. Thank you. Sure. All right, Tracy Moore. Okay. Right. Fantastic. Um, Your Honor, this uh, has to do with a foreclosure of residential real property uh, located at 19710 West 13 Mile Apartment 206 in the city of Beverly Hills within this court's jurisdiction. There was a foreclosure sale. Uh, that commenced on um, January 10th of 2023 with a redemption period expiring July 10th of 2023. This case was subsequently filed um, for possession of the property uh, because the redemptive amount was not tendered to HP Foreclosure Solution um, redeeming the property. Okay, hold on, Mr. Callahan. We have, I have received from the um, person stating for the purposes of this hearing to be Tracy Moore, um, a, um, I don't know what this is, a notice of payment of $153,749.97. It's clear on the face that it's not a check. Um, it was not tendered. 
um, when I asked um, the young lady standing next to me um, if that amount was paid, um, she stated that no amount was paid. Um, because what is it that she gave? I, I don't know. It's a notice of payment under, um, as defined by 12 CFR section 229.2 sub U. Um, which is a non-negotiable instrument, apparently, um, but it's not a check. So no money has been tendered. Okay. Um, there's a series of IRS filings that are not applicable to anything at all. I don't know if that was filed with the court, but the, the crux of this is that the reduction was not paid. It was not tendered to my client. My client has uh, title vested 100%, and they're seeking possession of this point. Was there a dispute as to this? Yeah, it's a dispute. It's my own. Okay, well, I'm in there. What is your dispute? I'm, where is the contract that I have with, them, with HP? I'm not a tenant. I've been there for eight years. I have invested more than invested interest wow. in the home. It was foreclosed unlawfully, and I'm filing. I'm in the process of filing a court case on this. I know I'm behind schedule. One. I don't know what the schedule for that is. Yeah. I can say this though, that I do have a sheriff's deed from January of 2023. It, it seems to me, Your Honor, that the um, lady standing to my right is trying to challenge the foreclosure. That time period has well passed, and this is not the court to do yeah, that. We're in the wrong court. No, no, we're not, Your Honor. Yeah, because I'm not a tenant. I'm okay, man. Well, that's just the characterization of landlord and tenant. But it's There's for no anybody country. that's in premises where they don't have the right to possess them. They can come here. And the right to possess is based upon who has the deed, basically. And in this case, they're saying they got a sheriff's deed because the property was properly, they claim, properly foreclosed. Nope, upon. If not. you're challenging the foreclosure, I don't know what you're claiming that's wrong with the foreclosure. Well, the note was separated from the mortgage, number one, and you can't do that. Okay. And, and Your that's, Honor, that's, that's against the law. Every, when you purchase a home, there is a promissory note and there's a deed that is provided. Um, those are two separate and distinct things. We are not discussing that. We are discussing whether or not my client has the legal right to uh, possession of that prop of this property. Um, and that there is no defense. It is. There is a defense. Well, well ma'am, you said you filed another case about yeah, to well, quiet I'm, this title because you believe something was wrong. With oh, them. yeah. No, I'm not. I believe I have proof. I have a. So where's the other case been? That's what I'm trying to. I was trying to get down there to file that. I just haven't made it. But I will be there this week for sure. Because okay. right now, I, all I have is. What they provided to me. And I didn't send you a copy of what I had sent them when I tendered the payment and they sent it back. But ma'am, did you? I don't know what you mean by payment. He says it wasn't a check. What well, was it? Okay. It was a negotiable instrument that could have been used as a check, but it was. Well, what was behind it? What kind of negotiable instrument? Well, it was, it was connected to the treasury. And May I approach the, the treasury? Like the U.S. treasury? Yeah, well, the Michigan treasury, not the, not the big one. I, I, I would ask, um, is this what you're Yeah, this, paper? yeah um, no, it's part of it. I, I'm, hold, yeah, I'm holding in my hand a uh, document that said this is a non-cash item, not a check on the top. Um, and may I approach your honor so you can take a look? This is what we're discussing. Okay. This is. It's got some numbers on it. It's not drawn from the bank. It's not. It's not a check. It was going to be drawn from payable bank. through Tracy Moore. It's done in good faith. That's her address. It says it's paid to HP foreclosure. And then it has yeah, the right. United States Treasury, Pennsylvania yeah, right. Avenue, cool. real property for set off an adjustment. And it's signed by Miss Moore without recourse. This says void were prohibited. Non cash item per 12 CFR subsection 229.2 U12 and 4. 
And it says here, this is a non-cash item as defined by that section I just said of CFR and issued according to 12 CFR 229.2 K3 and 4. Non-cash item is an item that would otherwise be a check except that a passbook certification or other document is attached or it's accompanied by special instructions as a request for special advice or payment or dishonor, or it has not been pre-printed pre -printed or post-encoded in magnetic ink with the routing number of the paying bank. I believe in other words, it's, it's a piece of paper. It's not. A negotiable demand draft by the U.S. Treasury, a demand draft drawn on the state. Thing government or unit of general local government that's not payable through a bank. Okay, I mean, you you just, I don't know what this is, but you said that no money accompanied, accompanied this. So and this was, I don't know when it was dated, June 10th. Mm -hmm. It was within the time period. But, but. But they held it and then well, let me ask you this. Where, where were they supposed to cash this? Well, they would have sent everything to the treasury. It was all of the original, it was everything. All they had to do was just send it to the treasury. And the treasury has $153,749 and nine cents since it belongs to you, that then they were just going to pay them out. Yes. Okay. I don't see how that could happen. Well, then we, we wouldn't know because they sent it back. Because we can't, my client can't do anything with that. Well, why, when I called, why didn't they say that? They held it for two weeks. They don't and need then, to do anything with that. It's not a payment. If there was a payment, they would have to accept that payment. There, it's, well, there was no payment. So um, other than your issues thinking that something's wrong with the foreclosure itself. Oh yeah, if I if I have a I had a securitization on it okay. and it, it shows it and well, well ma'am. In the in the um I guess my question is this if I'm gonna have a trial, which is what today's date was originally scheduled for, I just see some real question of fact. I'm not exactly seeing it. I got a sheriff's deed. And I know it's a redemption period of six months. You got this, which is, to my knowledge, not any type of uh, cash item. And I don't see how they could, where they would take it to even try to remit or cash it. I mean, it's like I could. I don't know where you got it from, but it says the document has a background and micro printing, and there's an artificial watermark on the reverse side. I have no idea where you got this and how they were supposed to cash it. Just needed to send it in. And I would like to know how how do they have title if I'm living in a home? I thought nine tenths of it was possession. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I can tell you that they went through what is known to be a valid process in Michigan, which how? is a foreclosure by advertisement. That is so not constitutional, and that was why I had brought up your oath also to kind of make sure that I got a little uh, help because you took an oath to uphold the Constitution. And you know, that, I, I'm very fully willing and able and capable of doing that. But where's the constitutional issue here? Well, that's this, is, it's, this is a matter of Michigan statute. No, but it's not a law. Statutes are not laws. Okay, well then what are they? What do you mean, what are they? If they're not laws, but they're on the they're book. Not, they're, they're on the books as laws in this state. Not, so I'm laws. not sure if they're not laws to you. What are they? No, I mean they're laws in a sense, but not laws by the Constitution. 
they, they're not laws made from Congress. Congress makes the well, law. Well, there's, there's, there's federal law and there's state yes, law. Fair, yes, but, but state but, comes from the federal. No, it doesn't. What do you mean it comes well, from it? Not, do you realize yeah. you got 50 sovereign states here yeah. that can do their own thing, Correct. separate and aside from what the federal government does? And they do it all the time. All the time. What they can't do is something that is a constitutional violation of their state constitution or the federal constitution. I don't see what this is a violation no. of a constitution. Just to foreclose on property when the pay when the bill hasn't been paid. But it was foreclosed unlawfully from Huntington. They didn't have a right to foreclose. They separated the note. And that's a known fact. They never recorded the note. They recorded the mortgage. And you're not supposed to do that. That was what that's what part of the affidavit said on the man, um, the gentleman that did the audit for me. That is not lawful. Your Honor, if that's the case, there was plenty of time to challenge that in the circuit court. Um, this is not the forum for that. The time has lapsed for that to be challenged. You know, it's fraud. It's, it's, it's always a challenge in fraud. That's you know, why. I've got some case law somewhere on the fact that, you know, the time to challenge these kinds of things in the foreclosure would be during the time that you have redemption, it would be at the circuit court. I mean, at this point, the redemption period is over, but if there's something that went wrong with it, the circuit court could, could, could rule on it, but you don't even have a case there. Sure, I will. I'm working on it. Well, you know, ordinarily, I mean, this would be the trial date, but I just don't see where the issue of fact is that would require us to actually have a trial in this instance. What I'm asking, can you give us a trial date, please? This is the trial date. Oh, okay, I just misunderstood. Yeah, this is the trial date. And of course, I'd have them call witnesses if I thought it was necessary, but I don't see where it's necessary. I mean, all the documentation he has looks good and you don't have any documentation that says this is not good, except for your statements that you believe are accurate. And if you wanted to file something, you have plenty of time to file something this more to challenge this in the proper court. This court just says, was there a proper foreclosure? You know, did they follow? There, there, there's just a process, there's procedures. You know, when they file it, they have to give certain notice, do certain things, give a redemption time. They they still didn't do that properly. Well, what didn't they do? Well, they were supposed to have served me and they didn't. They served you or what? Served me on the first paperwork. They were sticking stuff on. So you say it was never noticed in any kind of way. It wasn't tacked. No, I'm not saying never, but I wasn't personally served. You don't have to be personally served if they can't find you personally. They have alternate means to tack and yeah, do things. They didn't really. But still, this. Did you want to add case, something? No, Your Honor. I'm just asking for a judgment to issue provided until December 7th for um, all occupants of the residential real property at 19710 West 13 Mile Apartment 206. No, I. Okay. Well, the court is constrained to have to grant his relief because they don't see the issue of fact here for trial. Uh, it appears based upon a review of all the uh, documentation that's been provided that there was a valid foreclosure sale. Redemption period has passed. Uh, there was some type of something proffered that doesn't appear to be no legal tender for for the I guess the redemption amount. And it if there is any question done. about the foreclosure itself or the validity of this tender, I think at this point it should have been uh, litigated at the circuit court. So I'll go ahead and get the judgment of possession for the plaintiff. I just yeah, and you have um, after I sign this judgment, you'll have 10 days to file an appeal. The writ date will be um, 
if it, well, if I have the judgment today, I it's going to be day. December 7th. And that's the appeal date. Thank you, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. It's not a new form of the silly box on the top. I don't know if you want me to get it. 